High Pile one, if you picked the Yellow Jade <clears throat> Palm Stone, this reading is going to be just for you. Okay, so what we're going to be looking at today is um, all the things about your future soulmate, future spouse, um, and what I mean by this is your lifetime person, okay? The, the person that you're going to be with um, for, for life, okay? Your lifetime partner, whether you get married or it's just something long-term, um, things like that, okay? So um, this is the person that you have contracted with before you incarnated here to spend the rest of this lifetime with, okay? <laughs> Hopefully that makes sense. All right, so we're going to be looking at things like um, what is the main karmic block that is obstructing this connection that is keeping you two from um, connecting in this lifetime. We're going to look at how to overcome that block. Um, I'm going to tell you what your, um, your energetic alignment is with that connection where you are to them. Um, well, the connection in general, so it's going to be, you know, your alignment together. Um, and then we're going to be looking at some fun stuff like, you know, their personality traits, um, some important astrological markers, um, physical appearances, stuff like that. All right. So, um, yeah, hopefully maybe we'll be able to even get some timing in there somewhere. <laughs> we shall see. Okay. All right, so first we're going to be looking at um, what you're meant to learn during this time of separation between you and your, um, your other half, okay? And so here we've got uh, Love Answers Oracle deck, and we've got Flirt and Have Fun, okay? So I'm picking up that maybe you have a really hard time with just dating for the fun of it. Um, like maybe your main desire, like you're really wanting this person in your life now and you're not so much wanting to really like do the dating game, right? And so what you're meant to learn now is to really tap into um, your feminine side. And what I mean by that, so it doesn't matter if you're, you know, if, if you're a male or a female looking at, you know, watching this video, um, a lot of us have the tendency to be too overly dominant in our masculine energy because all of us, we all have um, inner masculine, inner feminine energies. So um, flirting and having fun is all about dating you know, whatever our sexual, sexual, whatever your sexual orientation is, it's all about dating and having fun um, without expectation. It's all about, and, and this is meant really to also trigger any fears and insecurities that you might have so that you can work on those, you can heal those triggers and insecurities um, as they come up. So, I mean, if you're, you know, if you, and when you're dating, you know, date multiple people. You don't have to have sex with multiple people, but, you know, start off light with coffee dates, you know, or just drinks, you know what I mean? And, you know, the first date, maybe keep it maybe 30, 30 minutes tops, you know, and just, and then, you know, you go, you let, you let the connection um, unfold naturally from there. And when you're doing this, you just have to expect you know, you're going to meet a lot of frogs, <laughs> you know, um, you'll meet connections where they won't go anywhere beyond that initial drink date, whether it's coffee or alcohol or whatever you're into. Um, you know, you might meet some really awesome friends. Um, some you might actually be very attracted to. Um, the point here is, is to allow yourself to meet people without an expectation for them to be the one, okay? Um, get comfortable with being around strangers 
and being yourself. Get comfortable with being able to show up authentically exactly how you are in the presence of, you know, a potential life partner. No, that's, that's not the expectation. I'm getting a sense that there might be There might be a deep-seated fear and insecurity when it comes to being around potential life partners, okay? Uh, and I'll give you an example to, to better, you know, a personal example. So I'm, uh, I'm heterosexual, I'm a female, and I'm attracted to males. Um, and I've always had a hard time showing up authentically around men in general, whether they were just people I was attracted to or not. But when I was around someone I was attracted to, I immediately shut down because I was afraid that if they saw who I really was, that they, they wouldn't like me, they wouldn't want me. And so I had a, you know, and those came from early childhood traumas, things of that nature. So. I'm getting a sense that this is where you're coming from as well, um, whether you know you're heterosexual or not. And so flirting and having fun is all about becoming comfortable with who you are authentically and realizing that when you are around um, people, especially the ones that you are attracted to, um, you know, maybe they, maybe they are your cup of tea, but it may be possible that you're not theirs. And there's nothing personal about that. You know, if you're a peach and they don't like peaches, they like pears, that has nothing to do with who you are as a person, right? It's just, you know, their tastes are different and you're gonna have the same thing. You're not gonna be attracted to every single person that you come across. It's not personal. And so this is all about becoming okay with that um, and being able to show up authentically who you are and not letting someone else's preferences um, shake you at all okay so this is getting very grounded in your own self-worth um, being able to show up authentically and learning how to connect with others without the expectation of it really going anywhere, just kind of having a sense of curiosity. Where is this connection going to take me, if anywhere at all? And knowing that eventually, you're going to come across the person that is for you, okay? But you're meant to flirt and have fun on the journey as you're getting to that person. And doing this is going to align you energetically with this relationship, okay? Sorry. Whew. Um, a lot of energy coming through. All right, so, okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at what the main karmic block is. If you don't know what I mean by karmic block, please do me a favor and just go look at the introduction real quick. It's gonna explain to you what karmic blocks are so you can understand what the significance is, okay? So first we've got um, um, what's coming through this is the main block, so there could be other blocks, obviously, um, but this is the main block that is um, obstructing this connection right now. And so you've got what's called a negative spirit guide. Um, what I don't want you, so negative spirit guides are not evil. That's not what it means, okay? A negative spirit guide is a guide that was hired by your higher self during a point in your life that it was needed, okay? Um, the problem is, is that as we get older, these uh, spirit guides, whatever job they were hired to do is now no longer needed, okay? And it's actually having a harmful effect on your life now. So it's not, an, they're not evil, um, they're not malicious. It's just um, the, the job they were hired to do, that job is no longer needed, okay? But they're still running, they're still doing that job um, and that the job that they are doing is harming your path now, okay? It's blocking your path. And in this case, it's blocking your connection with um, this other person, okay? Your, your life partner, all right? So what, 
what job are they meant are they meant to do well they're running what's called a program of unconsciousness and so we're going to get more um, information about unconsciousness to what all right so we've got a couple of oracle cards here um, they are affecting your energy more along the lines of um, your crown chakra okay so specifically they are this uh, negative spirit guide is blocking your connection um, with your higher self as well as your guides and you know as far as the guides goes you know if you are someone who is wanting to work with you know angels and uh, you know ascended masters and stuff like that um, this guide is making you unconscious so if you're working with them you're not really able to um, hear their messages okay and there's a lot of reasons why um, your higher self would have um, hired this guide to do that um, and here we're going to figure out um, some more information as to why that may have been and so here we've got ninth house of faith so you know expanded knowledge and this could be literal so um i'm getting a sense that this negative spirit guide was hired by your higher self uh around the ages of 12 to 14. and whomever you were living with at that time whomever had the most influence in your life growing up around that time and this is a general reading so you can add a couple of years to either end so you can say you know maybe 8 to 16 years of age but for the most of you it's going to be around the ages of 12 and 14 okay and so who who's ever there was a point in time around those age ranges someone who was who had a lot of influence in your life um may have introduced you um or maybe you've grown up in a religious type of household where higher knowledge um beyond what was taught in that scope in that doctrine was heavily looked down upon so maybe you had or had experienced some kind of a psychic awakening or maybe you were born with psychic abilities maybe you were born with the ability to see um you know spirits or maybe you were born with the gift of prophecy or any kind of gift where um it was looked down upon by the people that you were living with that had a lot of influence on you at that time okay and so this negative spirit guide was hired by your higher self basically to keep the peace so that you wouldn't be further harmed growing up in this environment all right so um yeah so how this is going to block your connection with this other person your intuition is going to lead you is going to guide you in the steps to take towards this person um i'm even getting a sense that this person probably isn't going to be your typical type um and that's probably also why flirting and having fun is going to be such an integral part to meeting this person because right away uh your programming, your quote unquote type, your programming as to what you think your type is, putting a face on love may have you completely overlook and miss this person. Not to say that this person is just like, <laughs> you know, dog ugly, not that at all. Uh, but if your typical type is someone who is, you know, blonde hair, blue eyed, and then you meet somebody who is the exact opposite of that, um, you would have missed out on it completely. Um, a lot of the times, too, 
um, we have a tendency to look over a type and you guys need to, if you don't know what attachment systems are, you definitely need to look up what that is, okay? Because attachment systems can completely skew our, um, our ability to connect with people in a very healthy way. Okay, so your usual type, it could even be, you know, on an ener energetic level. So maybe your whole thing is like, I need to feel that rush. It's that chemistry. It's this and it's that. And not realizing that that chemistry really is just a toxic soup of chemicals <laughs> that is indicative of having like an attachment system that is completely toxic. Okay, and attachment systems, you got a secure attachment, you've got anxious attachment, and then you've got avoidant attachment. Okay, and usually toxic soup is like anxious attachment being attracted to avoidant attachment and vice versa. Okay, and so a lot of people have a tendency to completely overlook who they're the love of their life is going to be because they're looking for, they're putting a face on love and they're also um, looking for that rush, that chemistry, that feeling. Now, attraction, obviously a basic attraction is going to be there, but if it's just, if, it, if you're looking for like a high, basically, you're gonna completely overlook this person. This person is gonna come in and out of your life and you're not even really going to realize it because um, your expectation is going to have you completely look them over, okay? Strong sense of that coming through. So um, as you are healing, because right off the bat, I'm getting that your alignment in this connection, your energetic alignment with this person as far as meeting and connecting goes, it's, it's really, really low. It's like in between 23% um, and 37%. So, you know, this is a general reading. So that's, you know, your alignment is somewhere in between those ranges. It's very low, okay? Because there's a lot of um, healing that needs to be done in order to, you know, on both sides, okay, this is really low, so that means both of you have work to do before the two of you can be able to, to manifest each other and manifest your connection, okay? So, anyway, <laughs> wow, we're 17 minutes in, and um, I'm like not even halfway through this reading. Whew, oh my goodness, okay. Uh, let's look at some more um, information regarding this, uh, your journey on this connection, okay? Here we have the Oracle's Gift. A lot of third eye, uh, third eye chakra definitely coming through. Um, we've got the Divine Matrix. And then we've got Into Me, I See. Yes. So, okay. This is you needing to get very comfortable with yourself and who you are as a person. Um... I feel like this is probably going to be the most difficult thing for you to do because the habit is, is to throw yourself into a relationship right off the bat, very, very early on. And there is definitely a sense of trauma, you know, like you need to be connected to somebody. And what this, what this reading is saying is, no, you don't. You really don't. Um, and the, well, I mean, the message there is I need to be connected with someone to feel whole. Okay, that's the rest of the message. And, and this reading is saying, no, you don't. The whole point of flirting and having fun is to get reconnected with yourself as a whole. Okay, showing up authentically and letting, and letting other people see you completely who you are dropping all the masks, dropping all the expectations, and while you're sitting across from someone that you're on a date with, and, um, dropping all the masks, showing up as who you are, and feeling completely at home in that moment with a complete stranger. You know, basically on an interview to see if, on both sides to see if there's going to be future dates, right? or where this connection is going to take you, you know, on an interview to see if this connection is going to go beyond this initial date 
whether this connection is going to maybe just lead into a friendship that you have with this person or if this you know connection is going to evolve into future dates and stuff like that okay um, so the message to here is that even if you do meet somebody and it does evolve into a dating situation that doesn't necessarily mean that you throw yourself into a an all-out relationship with that person flirting and having fun means moving slow don't allow yourself to become exclusive with someone just after a couple of dates or just after a few weeks you know allow yourself to flirt and have fun with multiple potential partners at one time three to five three to five partners at one time before you allow someone to claim you as their own okay why is that because masks are often worn and they don't fall until around three months in okay and then make sure that you know if they want to claim exclusivity with you that you you know you discuss what that's going to look like don't just assume that this person's going to text you every day or they're going to show up like they did every day no you need to let you know basically it's terms and conditions of dating you and what that looks like okay all right so the oracle's gift this is your power this is your gifts okay this is being very comfortable with your intuition and letting your intuition guide you being able to get still in the mind and grounded in the heart which is where your intuition unfolds okay so this messages come through the heart and are interpreted by your crown I mean by your your third eye okay and then the divine matrix is all about um, signs and sync signs and synchronicities so you are going to be guided to this person as you heal okay this is why this negative spirit guide has been having such and the job that they've been running has been such a, a such a ah, a detriment to your path here because if you're not able to you know if that connection to your higher self is cut off then you're not you know all these synchronicities all these signs all these messages are coming through and you're completely blind to it you're not picking up on them at all okay so there's a difference between your programming and your um and the messages coming through from the universe from from your higher self and your spirit guides okay and it, and it can be very difficult to discern you know what is what okay so with um clearing out this negative spirit guide and, and putting one in there that's got more of a, a constructive um a job in your life at this point is gonna like open all of this up <laughs> all right open all of this up and so you know you're going to be able to connect with your higher self as you're out flirting and having fun to figure out okay what's my next step here you know so you're not going to be running off of basically programming off of um, you know toxic chemical soup in the brain <laughs> you know um, you're going to be able to really uh, show up in a very grounded manner a very centered manner um, authentically completely who you are okay and so when you find people and you come across people who connect with you on that level it's going to be a very genuine connection okay very genuine connection and you're not going to be anxious you're not going to be always second guessing you're not going to be anything like that you're going to feel very grounded and centered in this connection and if you do come across people who um, show up to you inauthentically you're gonna pick up on it very very early on okay and so there won't be any of that back and forth back and forth if you meet somebody that you are attracted to and you see after a few dates they're starting to pull away or not show up like the way they, they did before you're not going to have a hard time disconnecting and just letting that person go because you know that that's not in alignment with who you are authentically all right i hope that's making sense all right so what we're going to look at now is um the steps to take 
um, to neutralize, basically to fire this negative, this negative spirit guide. And actually, you you do that right now. You can do that right now just by deciding um, that you know your this negative spirit guide, their job is done in your life. You know, let them go ahead and move on so that they can be reemployed somewhere else. And you can decide right now that you know uh, to hire a spirit guide in that in that place that is going to run a program that is more in alignment with where you're at in your path right now, okay? But this is, you know, these are the actual actions to take in order to anchor that healing in so that you can experience the results of it, all right? Uh, peace, harmony, and contentment. So fostering a sense of peace in your life, and I'll explain more about these in a minute. Growth, overcoming limitations. Yes. All right. And then we've got patience, a long road ahead, but a reward awaits. And so this is coming back to flirting and having fun. That's the message here is like, don't go into these, these meetings and don't go into these dates and these, you know, um, connections right off the bat, hoping that that person's going to be the one. Be curious about what role that person is going to play in your life, even if it's just 30 minutes of your life and you never see them again. Show up with a sense of curiosity. Um, what triggers, if any, might this person um, trigger off in you? And then whatever trigger they, you know, um, they shoot off, <laughs> you go home after that and then you do the work on that trigger. So if you get in front of someone and they trigger a sense of not feeling good enough, go home and do the work on that trigger, okay? So basically that's what it is. Um, feeling at peace with who you are and at home, at home with who you are, okay? Um, allowing growth, so in order for growth to happen, you're gonna have to feel triggered at some point, okay? And so you're gonna get to a point where, you know, learning how to move through these triggers in a way where you can actually grow from them and then patience all right um there is so a long road ahead awaits i mean it could be it could be a couple of years and actually what i'm hearing is it could be an upwards of three years before you meet this person three to five and if that automatically is making you feel like oh man <laughs> i don't want to wait that long that's a trigger why don't, you know, why do you need this person in your life right this second? Probably because you have a sense of not feeling complete, right? And so you need to work on healing that because if you're needing someone to come in to make you feel whole and complete, disaster is going to await you, okay? Not the reward, but the disaster. So this time is spent between you know the time between now and and connecting with your forever person is meant to do the healing so that the two of you can be aligned to each other okay all right now we're going to look at what energy is coming through to um heal okay uh, to support you during this time and we've got knowledge so yes it's all about healing this this right here they're blocking your knowledge to your you know from connecting to yourself knowledge from you know universal truth universal wisdom your your own intuition so and your intuition and this knowledge is actually going to help you attract um the resources that you need to heal this connection to heal the alignment or the misalignment between you and this connection okay so if you come across a trigger and you have no idea how to heal it removing this right here is going to help draw to you exactly the information that you need to get that healing done okay all right so now we are going to look at um we got some tarot that's gonna let us uh look at uh, this connection where it's at right now uh, basically how this um, this block how it's been um, more information about the block okay so now we've got the Empress in reverse the chariot uh, 
king of swords in reverse. All right. Queen of cups in reverse. Yeah. Ooh, and then the world. All right. Good news there. <laughs> All right. So, hmm. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of yin and yang energy here. And I'm picking up that the king of swords in reverse and the queen of cups in reverse. Those may have been the two major influences in your past that caused this um, negative spirit guide to be hired by your higher self. Okay. Um, so we've got three major arcana, which tells me that this negative spirit guide, some of the issues that came in, that you incarnated here with came from past lives. Okay. So you were incarnated into a family unit or a lack of a family unit, um, because of karma that was inherited from previous past lives. All right. Um, there's always a feeling of not having enough, not being enough and possibly both. Like the Empress is supposed to be a card about abundance, right? Oh, a feeling of always having enough, always being enough. In this case, it's reversed, meaning basically the opposite of that neglect uh, feeling neglected not having your basic needs met uh this could be physical needs um it could also be mental and emotional needs maybe you felt very neglected um not having you know which makes sense in the reading i'm, I'm very i'm very much getting like that's part of where this need to connect with someone to feel whole comes from because that's what was modeled to you growing up okay um the chariot, like, there's definitely, <laughs> there, there's definitely like an end target, okay? Like, you're on a mission to right this wrong in your life. But this is a subconscious thing, okay? And this energy needs to be guided elsewhere at this point in time this energy needs to be not focused towards finding that person to complete you this energy needs to be focused on you completing yourself okay want especially now that this negative spirit guide is coming out of is you know now out of the picture and we are employing a more constructive positive spirit guide well this, this spirit guide wasn't inherently negative that their job was at this point in time this is definitely going to really quicken things up, okay? This is going to quicken up your healing, definitely. Um, we got the Qu King of Swords and the Queen of Cups. And so this is possibly, you know, indicative of an air sign or somebody who um, has a lot of air in their chart or they come across as very, um, you know, have, have the traits of an air sign and then water. So air sign is uh, Aquarius, Aquarius, Libra, and Gemini. Uh, water is Scorpio, Pisces, and Cancer. All right. Um, so someone who was very critical growing up, very maybe very harsh in their words cold um, disconnected and then someone over here who was shut off towards their emotions maybe not necessarily so this person could have been very outwardly harsh this person was just not around emotionally maybe even physically okay uh, very emotionally disconnected um, very checked out is the word I'm looking for okay um, the good news is, though, <laughs> that this um, this cycle is wrapping up, obviously, all right? So, good things wait, definitely. And I love the imagery of this card. It is so beautiful. Um, good things await. All right, so that was the heavy stuff. Now we're going to get into the fun stuff. We're going to look at the actual... Um, traits of your other person we're going to look at personality traits astrological markers uh, possibly even physical appearance we'll see if that comes through okay all right so here we've got 
uh, wears three red items frequently. This could be, this could be verbatim, like literal, or red could be a very favorite, uh, a favorite color of theirs, you know, a dominating color that you'll see. Maybe they drive a red vehicle or when you meet them, they're going to be, you know, dressed in red, but red is going to play a very uh, key part in your initial meeting, okay? Your paths will, will cross when a holiday is in season. So it could be maybe Christmas time with red coming through. Uh, possibly maybe even the 4th of July. Uh, for those of you that live in the United States. Um, it just, red is going to be like, uh, if it's a holiday season, it's going to be maybe like a dominant, a holiday where a dominant color is red. Okay, I'm from the States. And so over here, it's uh, Christmas time and the 4th of July. Um, has personal pride for their collectibles. And so um, they're gonna have a pretty interesting collection. Maybe they collect art antiques, maybe they collect um, comic books. Um, yeah, something like that. Has three siblings. So this could also be literal or it could also mean that they come from a large family. So, you know, they've got three or more siblings um, and then possibly come from a, an even larger than that family, all right? Will come into your life when you least expect it. <laughs> yeah, and so this is why this is so important, flirting and having fun. Um, if you are like too overly focused on trying to manifest this person and it's coming from a very toxic um, want, so if you're wanting this person to make you feel whole, that's gonna actually keep them from being able to uh, be manifest, that, that connection and manifest. And I'm also picking up that if you do meet this person before those wounds are healed, it's actually going to be a toxic connection, okay? So you wanna make sure that you put in the work, that way you're not just manifesting another, another toxic um, connection in your life, all right? So let's look at this person, We've got some more tarot here, um, and their uh, some more of their traits okay how who they are as a person all right so and this is at this point in time um so we've got the six of wands reversed the magician reversed got judgment hmm possible spiritual awakening coming um the five of wands and then we got the emperor. Okay, so this person certainly has a, is having a hard time with their own creative power. They, they're having a hard time manifesting what they want right now at this point in time. So this is basically talking about their healing right now. Um, and while they do have a lot of They, okay, so they, I'm getting that they are, they are possibly in a very high position or they're working towards being in a very high position. Um, possibly they could be something like yeah, in law enforcement, um, somehow, uh, something having to do with legalities, lawyers, um, judges, things of that nature, having to do with contracts, things like that. Um, like they have a lot to look forward to, but they're, they're having a very hard time feeling like thankful for that. They, they don't really stop to take time to celebrate their victories because they're wanting to manifest something in their life, possibly you. Hmm. Yeah. Definitely on an energetic and a spiritual level, they they feel like something is missing because on the on the physical plane, they've already been able to manifest pretty much everything that they want as far as as far as um, physical stuff goes, and um, but they're not feeling very fulfilled. So they possibly are hoping to, you know, have a family, 
you know, a, a big family at that, possibly even. And it could also be something spiritual. They just, they feel something is missing. And that could quite possibly be you. <laughs> so they might be on the same path where, where you're at. They're needing to learn how to um, feel complete and whole in and of themselves. And that's where this judgment's coming in. So their, their path is basically mirroring yours. Very much so. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'm not picking up anything as far as like specific physical traits. The only thing that I that it's being told to me is that they're not going to be your usual type. Okay. Um, yeah. So, all right. So, let's look at um, some messages from them to you. Okay. Like their higher self, what they want to say to you at this point in time. It says, it's not you, it's me. So they're not really ready for the kind of connection that you're ready for at, at this point in time, okay? Um, it says, I'm confused about what I want right now. Yep, that's coming through. I need you. <laughs> so they're very conflicted. Um, I can't be what you need me to be right now. So like I was saying earlier, this connection, okay, so this ideal partner, both of you have both of you have healing to do uh, right now I'm picking up from you that you might be more on the anxious side while they're more on the avoidant side and so the both of you have healing to do so that if you do come together it's not going to be the typical push and pull dance where you know you, you the two of you go in hot and heavy and then one starts to pull away and then you know one is left heartbroken all the time all right so when this connection does happen, if you do the healing and they do the healing, the two of you come together, it's going to be a very beautiful connection. Very, I almost, yeah, so I'm just going to say a very spiritual connection because it's, you know, your soulmate, your ideal soulmate. Um, and this is why right now for you, flirting and having fun is such a big part in this. Because if you are, if you show up completely 100% authentically as yourself and you are comfortable and at home with yourself, if you meet this person and they're not completely where they need to be on their healing journey, you're not going to trigger them in a bad way. You're actually going to help them heal, okay? This is why that is so important. Um, let's see. Yeah. All right, you guys. Well, that was your reading for today. Um, if this reading has helped you out at all, if you enjoyed it, do me a favor and um, subscribe. Uh, make sure you hit that like button, comment, share, all the good things. And then um, I really enjoy your guys' feedback. So definitely let me make, sh uh, make sure to let me know um, what you thought, okay? Um, and I look forward to reading for you guys again very soon. Bye. Oh my gosh, pile one, I forgot to um, <laughs> give you guys the astrological markers, okay? Hopefully you made it to this point. Um, so we're going to find out um, what major astrological markers are possibly making up this person's chart, okay? All right, so let's roll some astrological dice. <laughs> All right. Um... Definite fire sign energy coming through. All right, because we got Jupiter. Um, we got the ninth house, which we got the ninth house earlier, and then we got Leo. So a lot of fire in this person's chart. So um, a lot of a lot of signs that this person is a Sagittarius, um, or has you know Sagittarius dominant in their chart somewhere. Uh, Sagittarius could be dominant in their big three, their sun, rising, and moon. Um, I'm really picking that up for most of you. Jupiter is in the ninth house is all, it's that Sagittarius energy, and then we got some, some Leo here. So, definite Leo, Sagittarius heavily coming through, Sagittarius heavily coming through, and then some indication maybe Leo might be somewhere in their big three. There might possibly be some Aries in there. So there you go. Um, 
Oh, yeah, Sagittarius coming through big time because the ninth house was even in the card that came by earlier, um, in, earlier in the reading, all right? Fun, fun energy, fun energy, especially, I know a Sagittarius can have, um, <laughs> can have a bad reputation, but you have to remember that's, you know, Sagittarius in their dysfunction in their, you know, when they are healthy, you know, insecure, they should, they're very loyal, um, very outgoing, very easygoing, very fun to be around, okay? All right, you guys, signing off now. Thanks. Well, hello, pile two. If you chose the pink tourmaline and quartz palm stone, this is going to be your reading. And we got a lot of good stuff coming today, a lot of information coming through. Um, so we're going to be looking at your your soulmate, your future spouse, your long-term partner. Um, basically, this is the person who is your your ideal soulmate. All right, the one who you contracted with uh, before you incarnated here to spend the rest of this lifetime with. Okay. Um, so we're going to be looking at things like um, the karmic block that is keeping you guys misaligned so that the connection, uh, so you can't make that connection. Uh, we're going to look at how to overcome the block. Um, we're going to find out what, where your alignment is with this person and um, all kinds of good things. So we're also going to look at really cool stuff like personality traits, astrological markers, uh, physical appearances, if they come up, maybe even um, a time when the two of you might be meeting. So um, we'll just we'll just uh, do the reading and see what information comes up from there. Okay. So the first, um, what we're going to look at first is uh, what this time and separation, what you're meant to learn. Okay. Um, before you meet this person so never never alone okay yeah so there's a sense here that you're not like you not meeting this person so far like there's a piece of you that is missing and and even though you may be surrounded by people in your life whom love and adore you. Um, not having this this person in your life, uh, you feel very maybe alone, maybe very misunderstood. And maybe you do have a lot of people in your life that love and care for you, but you're in a time of isolation. Um, and before you connect with this other half of yours, your ideal soulmate, your future spouse, if marriage is something that you're wanting, you are meant to come out of this phase. So if you're in isolation and you're feeling alone, you're meant to foster a feeling within yourself of a feeling connected. And this is actually stemming from you being disconnected from yourself because you can't give others what you don't have, right? So if you are having a hard time feeling connected to other people, um, you're going to have a hard time connecting to your other half and, and all of that is stemming from feeling disconnected from yourself okay you can't connect to others if you can't even connect to yourself so um, definitely a sense of needing to come out of isolation um, needing to get you know get comfortable being in a relationship not only with yourself but with other people so you know, um, feeling comfortable rekindling old friendships, maybe, um, you know, family ties that have gone stale or stagnant, you know, people that you may have, have pulled away from. This is, of course, if they are not toxic. So, you know, if you have friendships that you've pulled away from just because of hard times that you've gone through, um, now would be the time to reach out to those people um, authentically. Um, and if that's not something you want to do, then start fostering new friendships. Um, yeah, okay, but definitely needing to learn how to connect with yourself and then connect with other people. But, you know, that connection with yourself is, is uh, paramount, first and foremost, okay? All right, so let's look at um, the main block that is keeping you and your ideal soulmate or your future spouse. 
disconnected. So we've got, oh, an attached sole. Okay, so uh, an attached sole, and this one is definitely going to be from a past life, okay? And this is actually someone that you have a negative contract with, which makes a lot of sense because um, not all soulmate contracts are, you know, I mean, you can make a soulmate contract with someone in that person. I mean, soulmates are different, right? You can have a soulmate contract with anyone. Um, you know, you can have multiple friendships and those people can be soulmate contract. All a soulmate means is um, someone whose soul you have a contract with, okay? But I am picking up that this, this soulmate contract is with someone that you have had a contract with in a previous lifetime. Um, whose influence on you is having a negative effect. This soulmate contract is not with <laughs> the person that you're with now. This attached soul is actually not incarnated because they are attached to you, okay? So, um, and in order for, this is the main block. So in order for you and your ideal soulmate, the person whom you contracted with to spend the rest of this lifetime here that is actually incarnated at the same point that you are, um, in order for that connection to happen, this attachment here needs to be absolved. And we are going to get more information about um, who this attached soul is. Obviously, it is, an, it is a romantic attachment, someone that you've known in a previous lifetime. Um, and it's having a negative effect, a negative impact on your life. Maybe, and, and maybe not even just within the realm of, you know, keeping you from being able to connect with your soulmate, your ideal soulmate in this lifetime, but it can also branch into various, um, uh, various areas of life because this attached soul, because they are not incarnated, they're not inhabiting a human body, they are actually draining you of your uh, vital force energy. Okay. If you don't know what vital force energy is, just check my channel. There is um, a video I've done on it extensively and um, it'll talk all about you know attached souls all the different ways that vital force energy can be drained from you this isn't the only the only thing that can drain your vital force energy but right now this attached soul is is certainly um, one of the major reasons why you and this other you and your ideal soulmate for this lifetime are not aligned okay they're blocking that connection so uh, we're going to get more information on this attached soul. So, um, we're going to look at first the energy of this attached soul and, and where it's doing the most damage. Family. Okay, so root chakra energy definitely having um, issues causing issues within the family unit okay so this is something that has affected you from the time that you you know that you were born um and maybe that's the dynamic um maybe the family unit that you're from is very fractured and even if you come from a large family um because there is such dysfunction just from this connection right here this this karmic block is going to cause you to feel um, detached and maybe you know people in your key components key influences people in your you know the people who are key players in your childhood growing up if they were detached that's going to cause you to feel detached and even though you're surrounded by people it can be a very lonely place right all right, so um, we're looking at turmoil is the energetic signature. So this attached soul is, is drawing its energy from your root chakra, and it's the energetic signature that it's creating is, is one of turmoil, okay? So, yeah, lots, lots of energy going from this space. And so this attached soul is the reason why you may be feeling turmoil in your relate in your key relationships at this point in time. So not just in your family of origin when you were growing up, but in um, any 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 relationships that feel like family. So you know it could be friendships, it could be um, 
significant relationships with, you know, people. If you're married, it could be, you know, that could definitely be a factor into, into what is creating dissension um, or dissonance in that connection. Some of you are are in the middle of, okay, so some of you are in a marriage-like situation, whether you're actually legally married or you've been together, like living living together for, for some time. Um, some of you are with someone long-term and you are in the middle of either a separation or um, there's been an actual, like, a breakup like no contact situation. Okay, that was really coming through. All right, so let's look at some more information. Um, a lunar eclipse. All right, so as of the time of this recording, <laughs> let's see, today is um, May 20th, 2021, and we are getting very close to the Sagittarius lunar eclipse. And so a lunar eclipse, this, this period in time, if you're watching this close to the time when this, this uh, video released, the energies of the lunar eclipse, that's actually a really good time to release, to do some kind of re a ritual to release this attached soul. Okay, you can actually release it right now. And at the time of the upcoming Sagittarius uh, full moon lunar eclipse, um, you know, do some kind of a, like a goodbye ritual, letting this person, you know, this attached soul go. You can do that right now though. You don't have to wait till the eclipse, but like I said, the lunar eclipse is very, very close. And so you could, there's two things here, two things coming through. So an official kind of like a goodbye ritual, um, closing that chapter between you and this attached soul for good so this attached soul can be released to go reincarnate and you know go about their life path and a lunar a lunar eclipse depending on when you're watching this video the next upcoming lunar eclipse can have a huge significance on the impact between um, your connection to your ideal soulmate okay strongly strongly coming through but a lunar eclipse is definitely going to have a major role in this connection all right okay let's see um let's find out some more information about where you're at with this connection so we've got the storyteller move these out of the way we also have it is what it is and so we've got let's see um, solar plexus energy coming through and then more root chakra and then roots of abundance a heavy <laughs> very a lot of root chakra so your root chakra definitely is uh, needing some healing the energy there um, there is some programming that you have. The, the storyteller is all about the stories that we tell ourselves about ourselves. And so there's definitely something about your family of origin that has caused you a lot of issues growing up. And it's not necessarily that your childhood was, you know, ex ex excuse my language, but it's not necessarily that your childhood was shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, there's some obvious, you know, abuse or neglect or any, or something like that. Sometimes these things can be very subtle. Now, now for some of you, you know, you may say, yeah, my, my childhood was shit. Okay. And that's definitely going to be the case for some of you. For the other parts, you know, for the rest of you, this stuff is very, it can be very subtle, okay? Um, you may have had a parent that was in and out of your life, very unstable. That connection was very unstable. You weren't, you know, um, very unpredictable, I should say. Um, but there is something definitely within the dynamics of the family that you grew up in that has caused you some subconscious um, turmoil, okay? The story that you tell yourself um, a lot of these times are going to be hidden and they don't come out um, until you are in a romantic relationship, okay? And what I, what I mean by the stories that we tell ourselves, um, I'm not good enough, 
I'm not worthy. I'm trash. I'm not worth being around. I'm not worth paying attention to. There's so many stories that we can tell ourselves in relation to, um, you know, our place in a romantic relationship. And, you know, by the way, your place is on a pedestal <laughs> always. Um, but a lot of the times our programming goes directly against that, right? Um, so as far as it is what it is, if you, I'm hearing that there's, okay, if you don't know who Byron Katie is, you need to look up a book that she's written. It's called Loving What Is, okay? Coming, basically coming to terms and making peace with your past, whatever that is, okay? Um, and realizing that it's just part of your journey in this lifetime. It's part, you know, the baggage that you carry over with you um, from previous lifetimes, that's part of your journey is, you know, the, your family of origin is, is part of continuing on what you've brought over from previous lifetimes and your journey here is to finally overcome that, make peace with the past that you've got, and then, you know, growing from it, okay? Soul level growth type of stuff. Oh, we didn't, silly me, I didn't go into the past life. Okay, so first of all, um, the connection between you and your ideal soulmate, your, your alignment with that person, um, it goes from about 48%. So because this is a general reading, uh, you know, it's, you're, it's some of you are going to be kind of about halfway, 48%, 50%, clear up to about 89%. Some of you are very aligned and you can tell where you are at in your alignment by the amount of healing, soul level healing that you've been doing, okay? Now, if you're on the higher end of that scale, 89%, um, this is removing this attachment here is going to put you at damn near 100% aligned, which means that once you're 100% aligned, you meeting your other half, um, if you haven't met them yet, it's going to happen very quickly. Now, if this other half is someone that you're actually already connected to, like you've already had a relationship with them, or if this is someone that you are in a relationship with and you know that they're your other half, um, it's, it's going to kick off the healing that is needed for that relationship to finally become 100% aligned. Okay, now this... Uh, for you to be aligned, because um, it could very well be those of you that are 89% aligned, and we don't like to hear this, but um, it could it could very well be that the way that you were showing up was, you know, what was throwing off the alignment the most. So with you being in alignment and you showing up in a completely different way in this connection, um, simply means that you are going to... Um, change the dynamic of the entire relationship just in and of yourself, okay? Um, so, definitely, <laughs> I'll do a little dance for that. Um, for those of you that are on the lower end of the spectrum right now, and you can feel that you are, you know, you're the 48 or 50%, that just means that there's some work still left for you to do. But once, you know, this, this attached soul being removed is going to, is, is most of the issues, okay? So, no matter where you're at, um, I'm really am seeing that this attached soul and removing this attached soul from your from your energy field is going to bump you up about um, fifteen to twenty percent. Okay, so even if you're at the low end. Um, it's still a good deal of healing that's going to occur. And once this healing does occur, you're going to have to allow yourself some time for healing and integration. All right. Um, as far as roots of abundance goes, um, this is part of never feeling alone. So if in your family of origin, if it's not anything where you're able to reconnect with your family or even if you want to, it's creating those roots of abundance where you're, you're basically creating a whole new family for yourself, okay? Um, this can mean children. Um, this can mean, you know, friends. 
this can mean um, connecting with people who feel like brothers and sisters or connecting with someone who, who feels like a mom or a dad to you, okay? So if your family of origin is not anything that you want to have anything to do with because they're just so toxic still, um, this is telling you to go ahead and create that family unit yourself, okay? So that you're, not, you're never feeling alone. Um, it's important for us to be surrounded by people who remind us how precious we are, okay? And those people are out there. Um, if you're having a hard time connecting with someone like that, just remember what we talked about earlier in this message, okay? It starts with you. It honestly does. Um, all right, so let's look at the past life, um, where this attached soul's coming from, because that is the main block, okay? Oh, we've got Asia. Asia coming through communal living. Atlantis also coming through. So multiple lifetimes. This, this attached soul has been following you for a while. Angels. Possible Andromeda coming through. Medicine man or woman. Okay, so very... The, very healing okay um you've got a very healing very healing energy um and which could possibly be why this attached soul has attached to you um there is a soulmate contract so the two of you were in in a, a agreement with each other um at i believe in this lifetime so you know um very possible you and this uh, other person were were monks in a past life um or the person was a monk and you were involved with them somehow um yeah but the two of you have been together in multiple multiple lifetimes at well at least two at least two <sighs> okay so If you're ready to let this this attached soul go so that you can have the relationship that you desire with your ideal soulmate for this lifetime, and this may be difficult to do because there may be a, a part of your soul that feels attached to this one, you know, um, definitely do some meditative work. And this can be something that you do during one of the lunar eclipses that are coming up, you know, close to the time that you're viewing this video, okay? This is a timeless reading, so it just depends on when you're viewing it. Um, whatever messages you want to receive from this soul or there are any messages that you want to give to it. Um, this is, it's all up to you. You don't have to let this attached soul go if you don't want to, or if you're not feeling led to at the moment, it's all up to you. Okay. Um, if you are ready to finally let this attached soul go, there's going to be some, um, some actions you need to take. It's, you know, once you make the decision that this, you know, that's done immediately on it on a spiritual energetic level okay but there is some um physical steps that need to be taken some action in the 3d realm for that um healing to be anchored and to actually unfold okay so that's what these cards are going to let us know uh we've got action so awaken the warrior woman within so the action would be for you to start um getting out there again to to come out of isolation to start developing um, new relationships with people, new connections, as well as rekindling, you know, existing connections, okay? That's part of the action is to rekindle, rekindle connection with people. Breathe, inhale, exhale, create space within. So uh, meditation is, is part of that. Um, the cool thing about breathing is it automatically connects you with your body okay automatically so it gets you out of your mind and into your body especially if you um, for you what I would actually recommend is um, deep breathing and concentrating on breathing in and out through your root chakra okay and that's going to help to heal the energy imbalance here 
that was caused from this attached soul being attached to you for so long throughout so many lifetimes, okay? Uh, the last one we have is healing. Allow light to enter your wounds. So part of what being in relationships with people means is, you know, our relationships are mirrors to us, right? And so people are going to, you know, um, possibly reflect things about ourselves that we don't necessarily like too much, okay? Relationships with others and connections with others can trigger some very, um, uh, what's that word? It's not distracting. Some very, maybe not even disturbing. Distressing is the word I want to, I want to use. Some very distressing um, triggers. They can trigger very distressing thought patterns and loops and, and things about ourselves, okay? So part of allowing the light to enter your wounds is allowing <laughs> connections with other people and the triggers that those things can cause to happen so that you know where the healing needs to take place, okay? So if you're, you know, if you make a connection with someone and there's someone that tells it like it is or blunt and they, you know, they call you out on the carpet about something, maybe, you know, you have a really bad habit of making plans and then constantly um, flaking out at the last minute. A connection with someone who is truthful and tells it like it is is gonna let you know, hey, that's not cool, you shouldn't be doing that. You know, how does that make you feel, okay? Um, and why are you doing that? So, the, you know, that's the kind of trigger that can come up that you can work on healing. Um, and then also, you know, some something else that's coming up is saying that, you know, if you do have a habit of doing that, talk yourself into going. And, and remember that you, you probably usually have a pretty good time, okay? Now, I'm not saying, like, continue on connection with people who are toxic don't do that okay that's going to be detrimental to you that's going to keep you misaligned but if you you know if you're hanging out if you make plans with someone who you know is good for you they're healthy you know that you're ride or die or your bestie and you know you're just so used to just being in isolation and it just feels like you're expending way too much energy getting out and about remind yourself um that you normally have a really good time when you actually do make it out, okay? So talk yourself in to hanging out with people who are going to um, bring love and light into your life, okay? Um, next up, we've got some information here. We've This is gonna let us know what energy is coming through to support you during this time, okay? This time of healing here. We've got fun. <laughs> See, I just told you about that. Like, you normally do have fun when you go out with people. So don't let your programming lie to you and tell you, oh, it's, you know, you're too tired. Um, you know, it's going to cost too much energy to get out. And, and remind yourself that being out with people actually makes you feel recharged, okay? Maybe not for too, too long, but at least let yourself know, like, this is good. Like, the I'm going to have fun when I get out and about, okay? And this is actually going to um, really nourish me. And it's really going to help um, nourish the energy here in the root chakra, okay? So, yes, definitely a really urgent suggestion <laughs> is to reconnect with people, okay? Reconnect with the outside world. Um, new connections, reestablish existing connections, and um, if you make plans, you know, definitely make sure you keep them. And it might just be that you're somebody who just, you know, if you're feeling like going out tonight, just get out and about and, and, and text all your people and be like, okay, I'm, I'm over at such and such a place. Who, who's free? Who's available to come hang out with me? Okay, and that's another thing too. You don't always need to be with somebody. Part of never feeling alone is, is feeling um, connected with yourself so having the ability to go out by yourself taking yourself out to dinner taking yourself out to lunch taking yourself out to a movie by yourself and um, feeling comfortable because you're not alone you're with yourself you are you are your best ally your best friend right and then what that's going to do is open up your energy and then all of a sudden you just start meeting new people while you're out and about. That's another thing, okay? <laughs> but definitely rejoining um, the rest of the world is is definitely coming up, okay? 
Um, all right, so let's take a look at, we've got some tarot, and we are going to look at um, the anatomy of how this attached soul has been affecting your life up to date, okay? So we've got two of wands, eight of cups, three of pentacles, the hermit reversed, yeah, it does not surprise me. Oh, and the four of swords reversed, you guys. It's in black and white right here. Maybe not. <laughs> I mean, it's in, it's literally in the cards. You need to come out of isolation. Okay. It looks like maybe in the past, you may have been someone who was very much a team player. You were someone who used to love going out and hanging out and stuff like that. And something happened and it could be the connection. Um, like if you are, you know, if you are in the middle of a breakup, in the middle of a separation of a very very important um, relationship with someone. Um, it could be that the pain caused from that breakup has caused you to withdraw because it's just been too painful. It's it's too much. Like the pain of that breakup is causing you that pain. It's so emotionally overstimulating that you don't feel like you have anything you know left to give. And there is a time and a place for that. But this, the cards are literally saying that you've been in isolation for long enough. It's time to rejoin the rest of the world. Okay. Um, you are very much a team player. You very much, you work very well in groups. I know like, you know, you're programming right now and you're hurt and your pain may, may be telling you that. No, you don't. Um, but clearly this is saying that you do. Okay. You actually do. Um, the Eight of Cups is indicative of walking away, walking away from something very painful to go off alone on a journey, which, yeah, I can, under, I can understand that. So it, if the cards aren't saying, so your higher self isn't saying that this time of rest was never needed. It actually was, right? And so this, this makes a lot more sense. So those of you who are just now just now going into the separation where this pain is feeling very, very overwhelming at this point in time. Okay, so for those of you that is, this energy is brand new, like it's just starting, this time of rest is actually needed and what you are being told to do is to learn how to um, feel at home with yourself, to feel whole by yourself. To, you, you are never alone because you're always with yourself and you are your own best friend, okay? Um, get very connected to your inner self, to your higher self, to your guides, to the universe. That's where the foundation of all healthy relationships starts. It starts with yourself, okay? For those of you that have been on this journey for a while, the separation isn't anything new. Um, you know, it's been months, possibly even years since this breakup has happened. Um, for those of you, you know, you've been on this healing do whatever, you know, wrap up the healing, wrap up whatever needs to be wrapped up in order for you to be able to rejoin the world again. Your time of rest is over, <laughs> okay? You've been in isolation for long enough. Um, you've been resting for long enough. Um, it's time for your energy to bless the rest of the outside world, okay? That makes a lot of sense. So the, those of you that have been in isolation for months, maybe even going on into years, um, the healing in, you know, the healing between the connection between you and your um, your ideal soulmate, whether it's someone that you already know or someone you have yet to meet. Once you start doing that, that connection is going to happen fairly quickly, okay, fairly quickly. Um, those of you who are just now going into isolation because of the pain caused by a very, very recent breakup, um, that connection is not going to happen until after you've spent some time by yourself and really learning how to feel at home with your own energy, with your with yourself, okay? So, all right, this is kind of a two-split reading. So, if you've, you know, if you've never been comfortable going out by yourself, taking yourself out on dates, buying yourself flowers, that's what you need to do. Okay, take yourself out on dates, learn how to feel comfortable in your own skin. 
Um, and as you start to do that, the pain caused by this very re recent breakup is going to start to shift in a good way, okay? For those of you that have been in isolation for you know months going on into years, um, it's time for you to, to rejoin the rest of the world, okay? So if you've spent some time during that time with yourself, you know, um, and you're feeling at home with yourself, it's time to rejoin the rest of the world and, and reconnect with people, make new connections, all that good stuff, all right? Um, yeah. <laughs> all right. Next up, we have some Oracle cards. We're going to find out um, some messages from your ideal soulmate. All right. The one that you're meant to spend the rest of your life with here. Um, there are hidden influences that I don't quite understand. Okay. So your other half is they're going, they're on their own little journey. Okay. They may even be going through some time of a, an awakening themselves and maybe their journey may even be mirroring yours to some extent okay um, and this is true if you haven't met this person yet or if this is someone you have had a relationship with all right um, you are my sun my moon and all of my stars you guys I'm getting very much of a sense that this is for most of you this feels like someone that you have already had a relationship with that me that is currently in separation that's coming very that that energy is coming through very strongly so what that means is this is someone that you're currently married to maybe separated from um there's definitely is a sense of turmoil turmoil with or a disconnection in the relationship whether you're officially separated or not okay for most of you for most of you um, there, there is going to be a subset of you that hasn't, um, met this person yet. Like you actually have yet to meet this person in, in this lifetime. Um, and all this is for those of you that have not met this person, this, their higher self is letting you know that you are going to be the center of their universe. Okay. Um, and for those of you that know this person, um, once this shift happens in energy and the two of you are in full alignment, um, their higher self is letting you know that, you know, you are their sun, their moon, and their stars. It's just that the misalignment, the turmoil, the energy that has been blocking that connection from fully, fully really connecting um, has been causing both of you to behave in a way where it's just making the connection toxic okay all right um i can't be who you need me to be right now and that's gonna be on both ends and it could very well be like i said earlier it could be very well it could it very well could be that you you becoming aligned is what's going to help really click things into place Okay, because how you're showing up um, is, you know, because in relationships, you know, how we show up has a direct influence on how someone else shows up in a relationship. And it could very well possibly be that how you're showing up is not allowing the other person to show up how they want to. Okay, and yes, they could, you know, do the work on their part. But it might be that you are the one who is more spiritually awakened. You're the one who's more, more self-aware. So if you do the healing on your part and you show up in a way that is, um, you know, congruent with this reading so far, it's going to cause this person to shift in the way that they show up. Okay, so a little pep talk for you there. All right, so finally, you guys, <laughs> we got we got the fun part coming up. Okay, Um we're going to look at some um, traits of this person, your ideal soulmate, uh, look at possible physical appearances, um, some astrological markers, and let's do the astro astrological markers first. So what came up was um, a lunar eclipse, and so the moon, its home is in Cancer, so um, definitely some Cancerian energy coming through, um, somebody who is very um, emotional. If they are, well, let's just roll the dice and see what comes up, okay? Hold on, you guys. It looks 
looks like my battery is wanting to go out. Okay. We're almost done, so that's a good thing. <laughs> almost done with this reading. All right. Oh, we got Sun. Oh, Sagittarius. And the fourth, yes, the fourth house is the home of Cancer. Okay. So, that is so strange, you guys. Um, so, at the time of the lunar eclipse, the sun is actually going to be in Gemini. So, there's some possibly some Gemini energy coming through. Sagittarius energy coming through. Leo energy coming through. And then Cancerian energy coming through. Alright, so those are some astrological markers for you. So, we got Leo... Sagittarius, Cancer, and Gemini. All right, and that what that means is is those astrological markers could be in someone's uh, big three, so Sun, uh, Rising, and Moon. They could also have a stellium somewhere, so where they have like four or more planets or aspects, I should say, four or more aspects in uh, in Leo, Gemini, Sagittarius, and Cancer. All right, so. Those are your astrological markers. Now here we're going to find out um, some information about your other half, your ideal other half. It says music will be playing when they ask you out. It has an odd numbered birth year. They called you the other night, so okay. Like I said, for a large number of you, this person is already in your life. You already know this person, okay? You already know them. Uh, they have a noticeable facial, facial feature. And they have a unique smile. So that's kind of, yeah, all right. So as far as like a noticeable facial feature, facial features, <laughs> maybe somebody with really um, cute dimples, someone with really noticeable eyes, something about their face it really, really stands out. Um, and that could just possibly be saying it's their smile, but there could be something else besides their smile. Maybe there's just something about their face in general. Um, like I'm getting maybe their smile lights up a room. And they're very expressive. They talk a lot with their hands. <laughs> <laughs> very expressive which is I can see like um, Leo Sagittarius and Le Leo Sagittarius and Gemini t tend to be very outwardly expressive all right yes I can definitely see that all right now we're gonna look at um, some more traits so personality traits about uh, your ideal partner in this life okay um, let's see, we got Seven of Pentacles, the Emperor, the Eight of Wands, Judgment, yeah, there's that spiritual awakening, and then the Knight of Pentacles. Mm. So this person is actually fairly grounded when it comes to like material stuff. Uh, very dependable as far as working goes, you know, really good at paying bills, good at, you know, keeping things um, going on time. Very good at saving for a rainy day. And the emperor, this person is very old fashioned. Okay, so this person is very old-fashioned, and maybe you're not. Like, they, they have views as far as um, old-fashioned views about how relationship roles need, should need to play out. And what this is showing me is like, okay, you've got the inner feminine, inner masculine. This person is very definitely very masculine. They want the masculine role in a relationship, um, which means... They, they want someone who is very comfortable in their feminine energy, okay? So they're, they're very comfortable and dominant in their masculine energy, and they want to be with somebody who is very comfortable and dominant in their feminine energy. Um, 
If you're not familiar with what feminine energy looks like or how that is expressed, it has nothing to do with being submissive, being a doormat, letting somebody walk all over you. It has nothing to do with that. It's all about how your energy shows up. Okay. Um, for that kind of information, I would check out somebody named Adrian Everhart on YouTube, here on YouTube. Um, very good at teaching you how to fully embody your feminine energy. Oh my gosh, that is going to definitely shift things for you guys so much in this connection. Okay, um, so your other half is definitely going through some kind of an awakening spiritually. And that could be as a result of the two of you coming together. And this separation is definitely having an impact on them as well. Um, yeah. And the minute that the two of you, oh, this makes a lot of sense. So the minute that you um, let go of being too much in your masculine energy and learn how to rest easy and, and fully embody your feminine energy in this connection, it's going to happen very quickly. The, the shift in your relationship with this other person to where the two of you can really um, attach and connect 100% in a healthy way it, that's going to change everything and that shift is going to feel almost immediate like you're going to you're going to feel that shift almost immediately okay um yeah so i highly recommend that you check out adrian everhart on youtube follow her stuff go down that rabbit hole and you're going to see a, a very very quick shift in the relationship between you and this other person if you haven't met this person yet um, once you um, because this person is so um, you know and, and this is going to attract you like you are attracted to that person's masculine energy okay um, once you shift yourself into your feminine and you get comfortable with expressing yourself in your feminine energy that connection is going to happen very quickly. Um, if it's not someone you've met yet, that's going to cause you to almost completely align to them and, and to draw them to you very quickly so that that connection, that meeting happens uh, very, very soon. I'm, I'm hearing very soon. Like this, that's the missing link. But besides getting this attached soul out of your energetic field, um, that's the next thing that needs to happen is um, you being very comfortable with fully embodying your feminine energy and learning how to express yourself out of that feminine energy, okay? Um, let's see, was there anything else? No, guys, that was your reading. Um, thank you so much for allowing me to read for you. Um, if this video has brought you any kind of value, do me a favor and smash that like button. Um, subscribe, share, and comment. I always value your guys' feedback, and I look forward to reading for you again sometime very soon. Thanks, you guys. Hi, Pile 3. I have <laughs> a massive amount of cards, aka information, to share with you today. <laughs> so, if you have chosen the um, Blue Appetite uh, Palm Stone, we are going to be finding all out all about your your ideal soulmate okay so what I mean by your ideal soulmate um, we're talking strictly about the person that you contracted with before you came here before you incarnated into this lifetime um, to spend the rest of your life with okay your ideal soulmate because um, there can be all kinds of different soulmates you can have friends who are soulmates um, family can be soulmates um, but we're looking specifically specifically at um, the person you're going to spend the rest of your life with. Okay, your spouse, your other half, if you don't want to necessarily get married, um, all that good stuff. All right, so we're going to be looking at things like um, karmic blocks, what, what kind of an energetic block is um, keeping you and your other half misaligned, um, how to overcome the block. Um, where is your alignment at with this person or where is this the alignment with this connection at in terms of you guys actually, you know, really connecting and attaching and creating that lifelong union? 
Um, and then we're going to get into some stuff, some fun stuff like, you know, personality traits of this person, um, astrological markers that may be dominant in their chart, uh, physical appearances, possibly even timing, whatever kind of information is going to come up in this reading, okay? So, let's get right to it. So first what we're going to look at is um, the actual block that is coming through. Actually, now let's look at kind of like the general theme. So first, um, the, the first card is telling you what you are meant, the lesson that you're needing to learn in this time of separation between you and, and your other half, okay? And here we have, of course, of course you are um, worthy of being on a pedestal. Of course you are um, meant to find the person to be with you. And it's that, that, that energy of, of course, that certainty, that, that knowing that everything that you're hoping for is going to happen. Okay, I love that energy, of course. It's just like, of course I know it's going to happen. I got the tracking number. Of course it's coming. Okay, that unwavering faith. I love that. All right, and then this is just going to kind of give us some more guidance as to maybe what um, this connection um how it's going to pass or just some more information on it um gemini so as far as so in your thinking definitely this needs to start you know you need to start checking out the the way that you're talking to yourself about the situation okay um, how is your thinking in terms of being absolutely sure that you're going to live happily ever after, okay? Because that's what you're going to manifest, okay? Um, there may even be some indication as to when this connection is going to happen, either in Gemini season, which as of the date of I'm recording this video, we are actually in Gemini season, um, or almost in Gemini season, it's May 20th, and, um, yeah, so either Gemini season or possibly, um, another air sign season, so Gemini, Libra, um, Gemini, Libra, and God, what's the other one? <laughs> you guys, my mind just went dead, okay? Aquarius, oh my gosh, <laughs> Gemini, Aquarius, Libra, <laughs> okay? All right, um, Okay, so now we're going to get into the the um, the healing part. So we're going to look at what main block is keeping you in this connection misaligned, keeping it, blocking it from happening, okay? And here we got something called an orc field tear. So just think about that as, you know, if you've got a cord that is your connection to source where you're receiving all of your vital force energy, and then that vital force energy, which is yours, it fills up uh, and it's encased in this web that's around you, okay? Um, and a lot of the times, you know, there can be damage to the cord, which will, can restrict and limit our access to the amount of vital force energy we receive, which, by the way, is how you manifest, <laughs> all right? It's vital force energy is a big deal. If you don't know anything about it, please go check out my other video. Um, just go to my channel, it's in there, and um, find out all the things, okay? <laughs> um, but then, so you can have damage to the um, umbilical cord connecting you to um, source, and then there can also be tears in your auric field, and there could be multiple tears, okay? Um, in this sense, I'm getting that there's actually two, so... Um, those are some pretty sick that's a pretty significant amount of vital force energy that is being drained out of you so if you're constantly feeling tired uh if you always are feeling like you know you're putting forth a lot of effort but nothing seems to be getting done or progress isn't really seeming like it's being made this is why um you're putting in a lot of energy but that energy that you're putting forth is actually being leaked out because of these orc field tears okay um so in the way that an auric field tear comes about is through um, multiple sustained 
um, behaviors and actions that we take um, that has a negative impact on our life and we know it has a negative impact in our life and um, yeah so it's a karmic block okay I'm trying to keep this as concise as possible because these videos are running almost an hour long <laughs> so we got a lot of information to go through um, here we're gonna find out exactly where these orc field tears are okay so we're gonna find out where your energy is being spent and drained the most. Uh, we've got the root chakra. And then we also have the crown chakra. Okay, so a lot of energy being spent trying to feel safe, trying to feel secure. Um, that also has to do with roots, you know, family of origin, your own actual family. Um, a sense of belonging so a lot of, of time and energy spent into you know securing relationships securing jobs securing anything that you can so that you feel rooted and grounded safe is a big one and secure okay but it seems like no matter how much energy you're putting forth or how much work you're, you're putting in you never quite get to that feeling that 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 sensation, that sense of feeling safe and secure and rooted and grounded never really quite, um, quite comes to you. And then as far as like the crown chakra goes, it's just that your sense of your own personal freedom, which is largely tied also. I mean, the only thing really that keeps you trapped is your programming. And this is a big one, the, the way you think, okay? So a lot of energy is being spent um, trying to acquire a sense of freedom and, a, and autonomy in your life. And it just seems like no matter what you do, again, I'm getting a sense that you're doing these things in every area of, of life. So of course in our, um, in our economy, it's money. So you're trying to do all kinds of things to make a lot of money so that you can get a sense of both safety and freedom both safety and freedom those are the two biggest things in your life right now okay and um, that's where a lot of your energy is going and so and being spent and the only thing about that is and of course you know I'm gonna teach you or tell you how you can heal these tears if you're wanting if you're trying to connect with somebody in hopes that you're going to feel safe and safe secure and free and you're hoping that person is going to be able to provide those things for you the only way that you can truly be aligned and be with someone else is when you yourself feel whole okay when you yourself feel safe and secure regardless of what's going on around you uh, when you feel free even when you feel imp even when on the outside it seems like you're in prison Okay, this is all, freedom starts um, as a heart set and a mindset. Okay, it starts in your heart and in your mind. All right, so some awesome messages coming through right off the bat. All right, next we're going to look at um, how this block is um, influencing your connection with, you know, your ideal soulmate, okay? All right, so <laughs> right away we've got um, a sense that your personal relationships are very draining. And I'll explain more here in a minute. Oh, we've got the lovers. And this is what you want. This is what you want. You want the, the fairy tale storybook happily ever after Cinderella ending. <laughs> you want someone, you know, wh whether you, you want to admit it to yourself or not, you kind of want someone to rescue you and to take you away from all of the the BS, basically, to whisk you off and sweep you off your feet. Uh, we got the Five of Swords reversed. Let's see, we got the Seven of Pentacles reversed, and then the Eight of Pentacles reversed. And so, very much a feeling of just pushing too hard, hitting a wall, like, especially in areas of, like, your communication. 
this could be alluding to an actual um, existing like existing relationships if you are currently in a relationship or this has been your experience in past relationships having a really hard time um, feeling heard like communications it's like a brick wall separating you and other people a lot of conflict um, there's also a sense here to be careful in your thinking <laughs> that you're not mistaking pessimism for, oh, thinking logically and realistically. You can think logically and realistically and still expect the best to happen because that's where you're manifesting from anyway. You know, kind of um, um, a caution against being, you know, a Debbie Downer, if you will. Um, more of a sense of working really hard working really hard putting so much effort gosh you are you really are you put your all into something you really really do um, your lack of results is not is not for trying you have been trying you have been working you've been putting your all into something into you know pretty much anything you do and it's just especially in the area of you know when you're trying to feel secure trying to you know um, free your you know Feel a sense of freedom, uh, freeing up your time. Yeah, freeing up your time. I just want to enjoy my life. That's what I'm hearing. And you want someone to enjoy it with. And you know, there's a sense that how can I enjoy my life if I'm spending all this this time having to work and toil? And yeah, that's definitely there. So. And the reason why this connection, why the things are this way is because you have all of this energy, this your creative, your manifesting power is being drained out um, in two different places. Okay, that's going to leave you feeling like you're on a hamster wheel. You're doing a lot of work and you're not getting anywhere. And this is, you can feel this, this sense in pretty much any area of life. Specifically, though, um, in communication with other people, in your um, relationships with other people, romantic relationships included, and uh, business, financial, money matters definitely in those areas. Those are being affected. Okay. So as far as um, absolving this block, the minute you decide, so like I was telling you earlier, um, a tear is created when you are taking or you are acting out, um, you know, repeated behaviors that go against um, who you are authentically on this path. Okay, um, and so the way that you mend those tears is the same way by taking action that is aligned with your path. Okay, number one, first and foremost, you need to get your thinking in alignment with the truth and the truth is is you already are safe you already are protected you already are secure no matter what amount of money is in your bank account no matter what's going on um, outside in life no matter what's going on in your relationships security um, comfort all of that stuff starts in your heart and in your mind okay same with freedom freedom is the same way okay all right, so let's look at the steps to take to absolve these tears, to mend those back up. Your wish is coming true. Celebrate your success. And that's where this energy of, of course, <laughs> of course your wish is coming true. Of course you're going to be able to celebrate your success. It's that, expect, that's that expectation. You know it's coming. There's no doubt in your mind, okay? Caution, keep your guard up. Uh, mystery, secrets, and hidden meanings. Mm. So, not necessarily keeping your guard up where it comes. So, you got to keep your guard up against some of the hidden thought patterns that um, go directly against this feeling of, of course. All right, pay very, very close attention. To what you're thinking, how you're thinking, and how you're feeling when it comes to a sense of freedom, a sense of feeling safe and secure. And when I say safe and secure in relationships, this is really, really important. This almost slipped my mind. Huh. 
Thank you. Thank you, universe. Um, feeling safe and secure in a relationship looks like um, knowing that your heart is safe with them. Knowing that, you know, you're not going to, they're not going to be breaking your heart and doing shady shit behind your back. Um, knowing that, you know, you can trust what they say, what they tell you. If they tell you they're, they're going to do something, like if they tell you they're going out with their friends, you know that there's nothing shady going on, right? Your heart is safe. That's a huge one too, okay? And so you got to be very careful because a lot of the times we become self-fulfilling uh, self prophecies, okay? Because all of that is an energetic makeup in your energy field. So if before you even get into a relationship, you have this this expectation that you can never really feel safe in a relationship because you're always expected that you're going to be cheated on, that's what you're going to attract to you. That's the signals you're putting out into the universe that, you know, that's what I'm expecting. I'm expecting to get cheated on. I'm expecting to get heartbroken. So you have to completely switch up your vibe into this I'm, I deserve to be on a pedestal. Of course you're going to be faithful to me. Of course you're going to be loyal. Of course my heart is safe with you. Of course it is. I wouldn't pick anybody that it wouldn't be safe with, right? And of course there are people out there who can be trusted, who are loyal, who are faithful, and they are like that um, by default. There are people out there who would never think of cheating on their partner, right? So... It's that kind of an expectation, that energy of feeling safe, all right? And anything that comes up against that, like really do a double check, you know, when you say something like, of course my heart is safe. How does that make you feel and what does that make you think, okay? That's the secrets and hidden meanings that um, you need to keep your guard up against, okay? And work on healing those triggers, all right? Some more information about how to um, heal this auric field tear, or heal them both, actually. <laughs> Broken open, some more heart, oh, well, actually, yeah, heart chakra energy coming through. Healing the heart, yes. Beyond the ordinary. Okay, so clearly there's a sense of you being closed off. Not necessarily wanting to be, but you've had your fair share of disappointments of heartbreak and you that's the only way you know of keeping yourself safe and this is saying you need to break those walls down and you need to you can protect yourself with boundaries and this feeling of of course i deserve to be put on a pedestal and of course i deserve to be um with somebody who's going to be faithful to me and breaking your heart, breaking those walls around your heart open so that you can let that kind of love in, so that you can let that kind of love out of yourself out to attract that love back into you, okay? And then doing the work of healing your heart of any of any past transgressions, you know, um, doing any kind of the healing work that came from having your heart broken in the first place that caused the, uh, those walls to go up. And then beyond the ordinary, this is the big one, okay? Believing that, of course, this is possible for you. And expect this, that you can have a love for you that is beyond the ordinary. Because when you, what this is saying is that when you do finally connect with your person, your ideal soulmate, it's going to be something beyond your wildest dreams. It's going to be beyond ordinary. It's going to rock your world. <laughs> okay. Um, we got one more card talking about blocks and restrictions, and then we're going to be able to get into the fun stuff. Okay. So what we're going to talk about now is just um, the energy coming through to support you um, as you are in this healing stages, okay, of healing this uh, karmic block. And we've got transformation. And I can see... Why this is so, because you've been, so much of your energy is being spent and drained. When these tears are mended, you're going to have so, so much information, uh, so much, <laughs> so much energy um, just automatically, I mean, you're going to feel it. It's going to be tangible. You're going to have all of this creative energy. 
um, at your fingertips to direct it however you want. And it's going to, it is, it's, it's very much a, an energy of transformation. Beautiful, beautiful energy. I mean, literally, it's going to feel like it's out of this world. Okay, let's, um, let's look at your um, other half and see what, I got six cards here. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, let's look at some personality traits. Let's see what comes through. And sometimes um, personality traits can come through. Sometimes things about their physical appearances, um, things about their life and their likes and dislikes and stuff like that. I love this deck. It's really cool. All right. First, we got... They hum often. <laughs> oh, they, they hum when they're happy. That's how you're going to know when they're happy or um, when they're feeling at peace. That's how you're going to know that they're in a good space. Okay. Um, your paths will cross during the next air sign season. Which, if you know, if you're watching this right now, we're about to head into Gemini season. Okay, so for some of you, this is going to be really... Oh, and I forgot to tell you. Okay, so your alignment... Huh, how did I forget this? All right. Your alignment, your, your alignment with this person. Um, and what I mean by your alignment is when you're like really low in alignment, that's, that's a huge block. So energetically, um, you know, everything's made of energy, right? So... Um, energetically where you're at and manifesting this this relationship this connection this person into your life um the higher you are aligned you know from a scale of one to uh, 100 um the, the higher that alignment the more faster that the, the closer you are to that connection happening okay and so your connection your alignment with this connection is about, and because, you know, it has to be on a range because this is a general reading, but it's going to be um, 67 to about 86, okay? So 67% to about 86%. So you guys are very close to making this happen. And once these tears are finally, like, you know, mended, once those are healed, um it's going to happen fairly quickly, okay? If not, damn near instantaneously. Like, I would not be surprised <laughs> if you don't meet them within the next 30 days, all right? Just throwing that out there. All right. Okay, so what do we got next? We got, they've got lighter skin. So, lighter skin. Ooh, they have dreams about you. So, if this, not, if this isn't somebody that you already know, um, they, the two of you definitely meet up on, in the astral realms. And you possibly have dreams about them as well. Maybe you have dreams about them, but you haven't really been able to see facial features, but you've got a really good idea about what their energy feels like, if you can remember. Uh, at least one third of their body is covered in tattoos. Some of them make some of you happy, <laughs> if not a lot of you. Uh, your first kiss will be within one year from now. So for a lot of you, this could mean, this, so if you're meeting this person within the next um, air sign season, depending on, this is a timeless reading, so depending on when you are reading this or watching this video, um, that doesn't necessarily mean that the two of you are going to start dating right away. You guys could, you know, start a friendship I mean, especially if you're in a, if, if both of you, one or both of you are in um, a situation that, you know, you need to heal from, maybe one or both of you are still kind of lingering in a toxic relationship that's going to end. And so, yeah, what this is saying is that, yeah, you're going to meet this person fairly quickly, but you're not going to be dating right away. Okay. You guys are going to be acquaintances and or friends. Um, for quite some time before the two of you actually come together um, as a romantic couple. All right. All right. Next, we're going to look at some more tarot. This time, we're going to get some information on your other half to see uh, more about their personality, what's going on in their life right now, um, all that good stuff. So we've got the Two of Swords, the Ace of Wands, 
Four of Pentacles. Yeah, they're doing some work on themselves right now. The Nine of... Ooh, the Nine of Pentacles. So this person is pretty well off. Pretty well off financially. And then they got the Sun... We got the Sun reversed. Okay, so right now... This person is in some kind of a transition right now. And it, they're in between. And this is kind of what I was picking up earlier. I don't, I don't know if your paths are mirroring each other. But this could possibly mean they're transitioning from, you know, out of a relationship. So that when you do meet them, even if they are freshly broken up, it would not be a good time for the two of you to start dating. Okay. Um, they're not going to be ready no matter what they tell you okay um they are on the precipice though of a breakthrough so this is kind of why i'm saying like you know you're going to meet them and they're going to be in this stage right here where they're going to be in between at a crossroads uh in between in transition you're going to meet them when they're here okay um it will lead to a breakthrough and it's going to have them, it, this breakthrough is going to cause them to really start looking at themselves more deeper, looking at their own self-sabotaging behaviors. They're really going to look up how, look at how they show up. Okay. So when you meet them, Huh. Okay, so the person that you meet versus the person that you end up dating is going to be, I'm not saying completely 100% different, but as you maintain a friendship or some kind of a connection with this person, you're going to see the transformation happen right in front of your eyes. And then you're going to know when it's your time. <laughs> okay, you're going to know when it's your time. Right now, this person has a tendency to rain on their own parade. Um, but it's not always going to be like that. Okay. And if they do, it's, it's quite... Oh, this just came through. You're going to be the sun. Like right now, it's almost like the absence. They, It's almost like a cloud, you know... They, they, love, they definitely love sunny days. They cannot stand cloudy days. And that's basically where they're at right now. When they meet you, you're going to glow to them. And they're going to love that about you. Because even on a cloudy day, you're going to be their ray of sunshine. Oh, they're going to adore that about you. <laughs> All right. Let's look at some... Um, some uh, astrological markers and so this is going to be you know some um, where they're you know some astrological signs that might be dominant in their chart okay so let's roll the dice we got cancer um, I believe that is the south node okay so you guys have um, some some past lives yeah you guys have past life coming through Unfinished business. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we've got uh, heavy, heavy cancer energy. Uh, heavy, sorry. Heavy, heavy water sign energy coming up because we got um, cancer, right? And then we've got the eighth house, which is Scorpio. So um, they're definitely going to be water dominant. Um, if 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 their sun sign isn't if their sun rising and moon isn't water then it's going to be heavy in their chart somehow so like they're going to have a stellium in um in a water sign but very emotional um very connected in a, in a depth of um a depth of emotional i don't want to say intensity and that may be something that you actually that you actually appreciate because that's going to allow you to explore your emotional depths as well. There it is, emotional depths, not necessarily intensity. Although Scorpio energy can be very, very intense, okay? 
All right, so last we have um, messages from um, your person, okay? D direct messages from them to you. It says, you're like honey and sunshine. Yes, you're the sun to them. So right now, it's like they're missing the sunshine. They're missing you. And when you come into their life, you're going to be their sun even on a cloudy day. Oh, my gosh. And I'm even hearing that sun. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. <laughs> That's how they're going to feel about you. All right. Um, your spirit is all around, so they feel you. This tells me that the two of you are very, very close. If you haven't met this person already, um, I'd say within the next 30 days. I think one of them said like the next air sign season. So, um, yeah, very close, very close. Some of you, most of you within, I'd say the next, okay, I'm going to be safe and say within the next 90 days. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, but you two definitely meet up. Um, in the astral realms, you visit each other in your dreams often, and that's because your connection, the time for you guys to connect is getting very close, all right? Last we have, are you happier without me? They're wondering, like, are you happy? You know, where, where are you at? It's not necessarily, are you happier without me, but they wonder about you. Their soul, their spirit, um, definitely longs for yours. This is definite... You know, of course I said soulmate energy, but yeah, especially with the lovers earlier, this might even be a twin flame deal for some of you. So very promising, guys. This is, I so far, this reading has been <laughs> the most, um, the most promising, like, you know, you're the ones who are going to be meeting them the quickest. I'm saying for a lot of you, 30 to about 90 days, okay? All right, you guys, that is your, those are your messages. Um, if, you know, if you enjoyed your reading today, do me a favor and subscribe, smash that like button, share, comment. I always appreciate your guys' feedback, and um, I look forward to reading for you guys again very soon. Bye. Hi, Pile 4. If you picked the Smoky Quartz Palm Stone, and this reading is for you. So we've got a lot of information to get through. <laughs> um, we are going to be looking at um, the connection between you and your ideal soulmate. So what I mean by your ideal soulmate is the one who you contracted with um, to spend the rest of your life with in this lifetime before you incarnated here, okay? Um, we're going to be looking at what major energetic karmic blockage is um, keeping the two of you misaligned so that, that that's keeping this connection from happening. We're going to look at how to um, remove that block, how to mitigate it. And then we're going to look at where your alignment is at w with making this connection happen, which is going to give you kind of an idea of a possible time frame. And then um, we're going to look at some fun stuff like personality traits of your other half, some astrological markers that might be, you know, dominant in their chart, physical appearances, hopefully some timing might come through. Um, we'll see. So um, right off the bat, um, your alignment with this connection is... It's pretty low. It's about 30 to 35 percent out of 100 percent, zero to 100. And so there's a lot of um, healing, a lot of soul level healing, a lot of blocks that need to be worked through um, on both sides, not just you, um, but on the other, you know, your other half as well. So as far as timing goes, um, it's going to be a while. <laughs> um, not to say that you can't meet this person or that this person isn't actually already in your life. Um, it's just saying that you know, your alignment with this person um, is very low. So it's, you know, even if you meet this person, and this misalignment is going to keep you guys from really um, being able to attach to each other in a healthy manner. Um, it's going to keep you, um, and, and if you guys meet during this time, or if you have been together, it's, it's you know, before, you know, your alignment is uh, increased then it's indicative of a toxic 
uh, a toxic situation and that's not something that we want okay so let's look into some information let's find out um, why this alignment is where where it's at so let's see All right, so first we're gonna figure out what, you know, what this time and separation is meant to teach you. Speaking your truth. And some of you I'm hearing that maybe it's not so much that speaking your truth is a difficult thing, but learning how to speak it in a way where, you know, others will be willing to receive it, okay? Some of you do have an, a hard time really voicing um, your wants and your needs and your desires. And some of you have no problem voicing those things, but it's the way that you show up. It's the way that you deliver it because there's a way of speaking to people where we can deliver communication where it's going to, it's going to bypass that person's, you know, instant guard or instant wall coming up. Okay. And so that's uh, a twofold message. So there's probably a different couple of people looking at this video. So just, you know, apply it where it's necessary. Okay. Um, next, we've got the actual block that's coming through that is causing your, the main block that's causing this misalignment. This isn't the only block, but right now it's the main one, okay? So here we've got, oh, your your connection, okay, your cord that is connecting you to source is um, is damaged. So what, your, what a source cord is, it's like an inner it's the energetic umbilical cord connecting you to source where this is where you receive all of your vital force energy okay and vital force energy is how you stay alive it's how you manifest it's how you create it's how you birth the life that you want it's the source of everything in life it's the stuff of creativity okay it's a big deal if you don't know what vital force energy is um i did a video on it last year just go check my channel for vital force energy and manifestation and you'll get way more information on exactly how important vital force energy is and all the different ways that it can be um drained siphoned taken stolen leaked all that good stuff okay um so your connection to source is about 19 percent intact okay so you're only receiving about 19 percent of available fi vital force energy to you right now and um this can affect you so this block is showing up specifically in what is keeping you and your other half from being able to form a, you know to be able to um either meet and or form a healthy, sustainable connection um, in this lifetime, okay? But um, this is this can affect every single area of your life, all right? And the fact that you're only being able to access 19% of vital force energy that is available to you uh, means that you could possibly have a very hard time manifesting the life that you want, okay? Not just in love, but in business finance relationships friendships any area of life all right um we'll see what else pops up in the reading um so let's look at the energy where um this damage is affecting you the most so it looks like um yes okay so uh that solar plexus energy so your sense of inner empowerment, your sense of inner strength, you definitely have a hard time. Um, like you may not, you, you may be very, it may be easy for you to set goals, to make to-do lists, but actually like making things happen. It's not that you're not taking the steps. It's just that you're so drained of, of creative manifestation energy and nothing seems to really get off the ground and this could be in any area of life this could be business this could be school um this could be raising children you know having children um getting married sustaining relationships just everything feels hard <laughs> okay that's really what's coming through everything feels hard um next we got the fifth house of creativity again okay so this is like chakra um sacral chakra um also solar plexus chakra so yes 
this is definitely coming through a very hard time manifesting the life that you want to live um, and not just in the area of love and romance but definitely in the area of how you make a living you know how, how, how you're living <laughs> how you are providing for yourself or how you are being provided for yes it's like man why is everything so hard it shouldn't be this hard it shouldn't be all right um, next we've got some tarot cards that are going to give us an idea of um, let's put one of these up here just to keep it even how this uh, block is influencing um, some more detail on how this block is influencing this connection okay uh, first we've got the Queen of Cups Uh, the star reversed, the ten of wands, I can see that, uh, the six of wands, and the queen of pentacles, all right, yes, so this is affecting every single area of your life, um, right here, like this is feeling overburdened, overworked, um, toil and toil, just a whole lot of toil. <laughs> um, even in like, even in spiritual matters, even in spiritual matters, it's like, ah, oh, you, you're putting in so much work because you know, you have a sense of this, you have a sense of this and you're trying everything you can to fix it. And it's not and it just it doesn't seem like you know anything that you do really seems to work you know now we know why and I am going to share um, how you are going to be able to um, reestablish that connection okay or at least access more of your vital force energy so things aren't always going to be so difficult for you um, There is a sense that you do have some things to be thankful for. But you may have a hard time really, it's like, yeah, you have some things to be thankful for, but the list of things you want is just, you want so much more. And so there is a suggestion, an urgency here to, you know, the way that you manifest is you, you start by cultivating feelings of gratitude for even the smallest victories okay even the smallest victories because you have the capability to feel everything that you want to feel like what is it that you want to feel you are a person of incredible emotional depth while and you also have the ability to create the life that you want in the physical realm right you know the Queen of Cups she's a master of her emotions loving nurturing compassionate there's no reason why she shouldn't be able to have all fulfilling relationships and feel fulfilled feel whole and feel satisfied and then the Queen of Cups is very you know thrifty okay so not the Queen of Cups sorry the Queen of Pentacles is very thrifty she's very smart very good with her money um, very good with you know the money that may ha also be given to her very good with the, her investments and so there's like no reason why you can't be or can't have everything you want emotionally and financially because you have the capabilities you definitely do but this is where all of that creativity and all that manifesting ability you're, that's where you're losing it okay um and this is include you know so that also goes to show for like you know any past relationships yeah it's just yeah i can i can feel the exasperation i can feel the frustration i can feel just like why <laughs> why like you know like you know almost beating your head against a wall all right so what we're going to look at right now is um so the way that karmic blocks happen 
is by um, sustained and continued negative choices that lead to actions that have a negative impact on us, okay? Um, and you'll know because it's like going against your conscience. It's going against who you are. You know yourself to be uh, authentically, okay? So we're constantly doing stuff. It's, it's not just thinking and feeling, but it has to be actual action that we are taking on a regular basis that um, goes against who we are authentically, who we are at a soul level, okay? And the more that this happens, the more that you go against yourself, um, the more this damage is eroded. And so this is, you know, this isn't something, this is something that's been happening for a while. Um, with your connection being down to about 19%, um, yeah, this has been going on for a while. Um, all right, so let's look at the steps. So since it took action for this to get to this condition, it's going to take action to... Um, to heal it all right so let's look at some of those actions now uh, set intentions plant the seeds and watch them grow so um, directing your focus on purpose directing your power directing your um, creative and manifesting ability on purpose okay um, there may be a sense of like why even try and this is saying this is saying don't give up all right, so set intentions and plant the seeds and watch them grow, especially now that this issue is going to be um, remedied. Trust, uh, faith in the power of the universe. Yes. Um, whatever it is that you're wanting is never outside of your reach. It's just a matter of figuring out um, what's going on with your vital force energy, all right? Your wish is coming true, celebrate your success. So these are the actions to take and it's pretty much more or less just your expectation, um, your inner strength, knowing that you have the power to create the life that you wanna create, okay? So, you know, starting today, starting now, start setting intentions, start planting the seeds of the life that you want to live and take action towards, um, you know, um, making those intentions come to pass, okay? Uh, trust and have faith in the power of the universe that what you set into motion is going to come to pass and, and know that your wish is coming true, whatever that may be. Celebrate your success, so celebrate it now. Get into the feelings like, you know, um, if you set a goal, and you hit that goal, what's it going to feel like when you reach that goal? Start celebrating and getting yourself into that state of emotion right now, okay? That's going to help draw that those things to you, okay? Um, what else do we have? Awakening genius. Oh, okay, I just got a sense of a, of a, a tiger, yeah. Huh, okay, awakening genius but i was like awaken the lion <laughs> which a lion is oh going back to the fifth house which is the house of leo awaken the lion awaken the genius you know lions are never afraid to speak their truth but a smart lion does it in a way where their you know their pack will listen and want to make them happy mm, powerful a grand symphony so you know you're a symphony, if you think about the individual parts, when they come together, they make such beautiful music together. So while you are unique and special, also become comfortable with working kind of like a part of a team. Hmm. Let's see what this says. Shining through. So... Maybe it's not so much that you have a problem working as part of a team. Maybe you don't know when exactly to take the lead. Huh. Okay. Well, that makes a lot of sense, especially with the, all the, the lion energy wanting to come through. That might be your spirit animal for right now. Mm. You might want to meditate on that. Hmm. Yes. Okay. Okay. Let's look at the energy that's coming through that's wanting to support you um, during this time of healing, okay? And we've got 
peace. Can you imagine the sense of peace and comfort and stability that you would have <laughs> if you had a couple of lions that were always around you, that loved you, that would never hurt you, but always around you and protecting you? Can you imagine that? The kind of peace that you would feel. Mm. But not just peace in a sense of feeling secure and safe in your own space, but um, feeling safe and secure in every area of life. Like feeling safe and secure that, you know, your heart, you can trust your heart with other people, uh, including your romantic partner. Um, peace with your financial situation that you're, the universe is going to provide for you. Trust in your own ability to manifest and create the life that you want, okay? So it's that kind of peace that's coming through to support you during this time. All right, you guys, now we're going to finally get into the fun part. So we're going to look at some, um, we're going to look at your ideal soulmate and who they are as a person, what they look like, um, look at some astrological markers um, that, you know, see what comes through. So personality traits, physical appearance, possible timing, like I said, um, Timing is probably going to be a while, you guys, because your your alignment is so far off um, that both of you on both sides have a lot of healing to do, okay? Um, let's see what else we've got. So, your other half, what are your traits? Uh, they have a personal pride for the collectibles. So, they collect, they collect things, um, like little trinkets or... You know, maybe they like crystals. You know, I collect crystals and tarot card and oracle decks. You know, maybe they've got something like that. Antiques or comic books or figurines or something. There's something that they collect that they take personal pride in. They dye their hair in usual colors. Okay, so some of you this may be true. Some of you, what's coming through to me, that this person has no problem expressing themselves physically. So if they're not dyeing their hair other colors, then maybe they wear um, a lot of... Maybe the way they present themselves is very colorful in the way that they dress. Um, very colorful. They love color, okay? And they love expressing themselves with color. Maybe even tattoos, okay? So color somehow on their physical body. Yes. All right. Um, they will be the one to ask you out. All right. Are you a little bit shy? <laughs> uh, speaks with an accent. Ooh, I like that one. And then um, communicating their feelings comes easy for them. And so this is where for you speaking your truth comes in because this person is not going to have any issues letting you know where, where you stand with them. Okay. And they will appreciate the same for you. It's just making sure that you are able to communicate in a way that's effective. All right, okay, so let's look at um, some who they are um, as a person. Maybe, you know, we'll figure out what they do for a living, maybe what's going on in their life at this current time. Let's, let's, check, let's check it out. Um, and actually, hold on. Yeah, these are supposed to be reversed. Okay, so we got um, Temperance in reverse, the Page of Cups in reverse, the seven of pentacles in reverse this person okay we got the lovers and then we've got the seven of swords in reverse this person you this person is not ready for the kind of connection right now they are your person but right now where they're at in their life they've got so much healing they need to do they're not they're not ready for you <laughs> and you may not be ready for them as well. This is just letting me see kind of like a snapshot of where they're at. Um, they're not, they're not too balanced. Um, they're pretty immature when it comes to themselves emotionally. Um, yeah, there's not really, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, you guys. Uh, I hate being the bearer of bad news, but right now where this person stands, they're, they're not ready. Not to say that they're not going to get themselves, you know, because right here this lets me know that they do want, they do want that. They want a loving family. They want, they want you and someone like you in their life. They want a healthy counterpart. They want the yin to their yang or the yin to their yin or whatever, right? They do want that, but they're just not ready. 
in any way, shape, or form. Like nothing about them is ready. They're not ready emotionally, financially. Huh, um, you know, they're they might even be, excuse my language, but a fuck boy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, however you want to translate that for your own sexual orientation, but that's just how I can that's how it's coming off to deliver it. Alright, so um, just, you know, send your love to this person. <laughs> Tell them to get their stuff together because, you know, yeah. And you know what? In the meantime, just enjoy yourself. And just enjoy your life. Enjoy dating. Enjoy having fun. Enjoy, you know, time with your friends and stuff like that. As, you know, you heal. Because the fact that this person is someone that you have contracted to be with. Okay? Ideally, that's saying that, you know, you'll be healthy and they'll be healthy. There are some times, though, that we contract with someone for the purposes of triggering soul growth. And it would suck very much if the person that is triggering soul growth is someone that you're going to be with for the rest of your life. Oh, my gosh. All right. Well, like I said, this is just where they're at right now. Okay. Um. Well, and the fact that your guys' alignment is so low, okay, so when, when they do the work to get to where they need to be, where they can provide you with the connection that you're wanting, and when you do the work that you need to do, where you can provide them with the connection that you're wanting, um, your alignment would be closer to each other. So there's healing on both ends. So while, while they may be... <laughs> in, a possible toxic connection for you if you were to meet them today that doesn't mean that that's where they're gonna stay okay not at all so there's some good news for you all right so um, let's look at some astrological markers right, we got Virgo uh, let's see is that Neptune I'll have to double check on that one and then um, oh, that was number one first house um what was the other one yeah that's uh no that's uranus okay uranus that's what it is i believe yes okay so we've got um some earth energy virgo energy coming through uh first house would be aries and then um some aquarius energy coming through okay so virgo aquarius Aries somewhere in their chart you know Sun big three would be Sun moon and rising or they've got a stellium somewhere in those signs all right all right so the last thing we're gonna look at now are um, messages directly from your person all right messages to you and it says I can't be bothered I'm so exhausted I'm so exhausted from this yes this person is not ready not ready for for you quite yet um i try to run from our love but our souls crave this magic they do they want they want it he, they're just not ready for it yet um and this says i surrender okay so that's actually that is promising so this is telling me that all the mess that's going on right here this is going to change because they realize the mess, the hot mess that they are right now. They realize it. And so um, they're on the precipice of uh, either an awakening or some kind of a re realization or an epiphany that's going to um, kickstart, you know, getting their life in order so that, you know, they can do the work on their part to increase the alignment for your connection all right so there there's the silver lining you guys <laughs> okay um, when you meet this person um, their energy is going to be completely different from this all right completely different and they're going to be someone that you'll be able to have a peaceful loving honest loyal faithful relationship with um, after they've gone through that healing all right all right, you guys, those were your messages. Um, if you enjoy this reading, just smash that like button, um, click share, subscribe, comment. I always enjoy your guys' um, comments, your feedback. I look forward to it. Um, and I also look forward to reading for you guys again very soon. Love you. Bye.